am Bad Bob the Blues Chef. I get the blues, I cook the food. Welcome to my Mexican fiesta. What I'm going to do today is show you how to take this bowl of fresh ingredients and turn it into this delicious meal. These are individual recipes that make up my Mexican Fiesta series. You can use them together or by themselves, but I'm sure you'll enjoy each and every one of them. You know, it wouldn't be a Mexican Fiesta without a margarita, so let's have one of those. They're easy, especially the way I make them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a lime and I'm going to spread the lime juice on the rim of the glass. I get some kosher salt in a plate. Here's my perfectly rimmed glass. Ice cubes. Now I'm going to take two to one, Jose Cuervo tequila, to one of my Patron Citronge. Now the Citronge, it's like a Gramenier, but it's half as expensive. It's excellent. It's a very good buy. Both of these are very high in alcohol, so watch out. Don't drink too many of these or you'll be in big trouble, especially if you have to drive somewhere. So, as I said, I'm going to do two to one, tequila to Citronge. Ooh, oh, that's going to be good. So now I will squeeze the lime into the drink. You must have a lot of this lime in there. It's got to be fresh. It's a bit full. I'm ready to drink some. That's so good, it makes me want to play the blues. Hello, my name is Bad Bob, the Blues Chef. I'm coming to you today from my beautiful garden, where I'm going to pick some veggies for our Garden Fiesta Salsa. This is called a Spanish Spice Hot Pepper. And this is the first year I've grown it, but it feels like it's pretty mature. Here's a wonderful Anaheim pepper that I'm going to add to my mix. And here's a jalapeno. I believe it's a little immature, but it's nice and firm. So there's going to be some good seeds in here. OK, I've got some beautiful Roma tomatoes that I'm going to use for this salsa. So we'll get some of these. Check this out, this is interesting. I like to add a little bit of fresh oregano to my salsa. This is unusual for a Mexican salsa, but I think you're gonna enjoy the touch. Well, I'm gonna need cilantro for this dish. This one grew up as a volunteer with the rest of my herbs. Now it's getting in the way, so I'm gonna take them out and use them. Okay, well here's what we got out of the garden. Got four types of peppers, really beautiful cilantro, we have some tomatoes, and some fresh oregano. I also pulled in some lemons and a red onion from the pantry. Okay, I'm gonna start chopping this up. I'm gonna chop it up fairly fine, but it's gonna go in the blender anyway, so it doesn't have to be too fine. Okay, we've got everything all diced up here. I got my tomatoes and my red onions here. I got a bunch of peppers. All the seeds have been taken out except for the jalapeno. The jalapeno seeds are nice and tender and they have a nice flavor. Okay, we're gonna add an entire lemon. Make sure you get any of the seeds out. Seeds are bad. Okay, now that I've added my lemon, I'm just gonna throw in the rest of my ingredients and I'll tell you what spices we're gonna use. I'm not going to add the cilantro and the, and the oregano until after we blend it because it gives it a kind of a weird green color. But I am going to add some kosher salt, two pinches, nice amount of some nicely fresh ground pepper, garlic powder, and paprika. So here's what it looks like before we put it through the blender. There's, it's nicely chopped, but it's not too fine. So let's put it in there and see what happens. Take about, well, let's say 90%. I'm up in the ante. We're gonna take 90% of the stuff and put it in there. Almost all the juice. Give it a couple pulses. You don't want it to completely blend. You're just trying to help it dice. That should be good. Let's add it to this. Now, I'm going to add in the cilantro. Well, here we have it. Bad Bob's Garden Salsa. Now you can make it too. Thank you very much. The barbecue season has officially arrived. 
ladies and gentlemen, fire up your grills. Angelis is ready to lead you into barbecue greatness. Whether you're searing sweetness, smoking slow or low, or just grilling burgers or brats, or the freshest seafood this side of the sea, Angelis is here to help. With USDA Choice Certified Angus Beef, our signature bistro burgers, tender pork, and everything that goes along with picnics, parties, and family fun. So get in here to Angelis and let's share ideas of barbecue greatness. Hey, greetings. It's Bad Bob the Blue Chef back again. Now I'm going to show you my grandmother's guacamole recipe. This is an old Southern California recipe that you're going to love. This is Gladys Keppel Orwig's recipe from Southern California. She was born in L.A. in the 1800s, so she knows a little bit about Southern California and, and Mexican food. So it's a, we're going to start off with three avocados, and I'm going to take the insides out. Okay, the lemon or the lime. They're both excellent. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to use a little bit of each. I always roll them first. It breaks up the little juice sacks inside there and makes it easier to squeeze. The lemon will stop the oxidation of the avos also. Okay, now I'm going to add my red onions, diced fairly small, not too, not too small. I like to have some chunks in there. So you can see there, it's a nice dice. It's about a cup. And also a tomato. It's about a, it's a medium sized tomato. Now I'm going to put some kosher salt on and some ground black pepper. A little bit of paprika again. Just a little skosh of some cayenne pepper to give it a little kick. Some garlic powder and some cumin. Gives it a nice flavor. I like cumin. Mix that up and while I'm doing this, see the avocado is getting smashed as I'm mixing this stuff together. I need a jalapeno. You now when I dice this up, I'm going to dice it pretty small and I'm going to test it because no two jalapenos are the same. Some are hot, some are mild. So before you go dumping everything in, you probably want to have a good idea of what you got. It's not a terribly hot jalapeno. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add, this is a pretty fairly big one though, so I'm going to add about two thirds of it. A couple full tablespoons. I'll mix it in and then decide if I want to add some more. It's hard to take it out. It's thoroughly masked, as you can see. Dicing it would have been a waste of my time. I'm going to add in a cup, a full cup, maybe a little bit more of some nice fresh cilantro. So let's give it a try and see what it's like now. Mm. Wow. Perfect. I'm not going to touch a thing. That's absolutely spectacular. I'll put this in the refrigerator and let it cool. And it'll be good to go in just a little while. Thanks. Hey, it's Bad Bob the Blue Chef, back again with one of my creations for my Mexican Fiesta. Today it's going to be my refried black beans. You're going to like this one. So I'm going to put in two cans, and I'm going to include all the water and everything. First, I'm going to put a couple tablespoons full of olive oil in this pan, and I'm going to add a bunch of vegetables, get them coated in the olive oil, and then I'll add the beans into it. Now that my pan is nice and hot, I'm going to add about a half a cup of onions and diced red uh, bell peppers, or you can use green bell peppers, and some finely diced carrots. This is all about a half a cup of each one of these things is all you need. Got some freshly chopped garlic that I'm going to add. Those were two large cloves. I'm going to add a little salt, kosher salt to this. Black pepper. Freshly ground, of course. A little bit of paprika. This is cayenne. Water and everything. I'm going to be using the stick on it anyway, but uh, the longer it cooks, the better the flavors are going to be. So have some patience with it if you, if you have the time. These beans have been cooking about an hour. You can see they're nice and thick. In fact, they're too thick. Once I blend them with my stick blender, they will get even thicker. So I'm going to thin it down with some tequila. This will make it very interesting. Not much, about a half a shot or so. Just enough to thin it down a little. I'll let it cook out a while before I blend it. I think all the alcohol is about gone. It's going to just have that nice little smoky flavor to it. So now I hit it with my stick and we'll be ready to serve. Well, I took my beans and I blended them until they were pretty smooth. 
At least 90% of the beans were smashed by my stick blender, and they came out beautifully. And here they are, my refried beans. Bad Bob's Black Refried Beans with Tequila. Yeehaw! Hey, it's Bad Bob the Blue Chef, back with my individual recipe for my Mexican Fiesta creation. And here's my Mexican rice. The Spanish rice or the Mexican rice is one of my favorite parts of this dish. I love this stuff. I start off with two cups of white rice. I like basmati rice, but you can use any uh, short or long grain white rice that you choose. So again, I'm going to put in a couple tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I'm going to go ahead and put in my rice and I'm going to stir it and get it coated. I'm going to come back periodically. This is on about uh, three quarters of the way, three quarter heat. Rice is nice and toasty, nice and lightly brown. Black bean and corn salsa. This is red gold brand. You can use any brand that you like, but this really works well with this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this salsa, 16 ounces of salsa. I'm going to take this can and I'm going to put it into that hot, chalky brown rice right now. In you go. We'll stir it in to give it a chance to marry the flavors. Then I'm going to add one and three quarters cups of vegetable broth. Now that that's come to a boil, I'm going to give it a one last stir, put the lid on it and put it into the oven. 375, 25 minutes. When I take it out, I'm going to put it on the stove top for 10 minutes without opening the lid. Then I'm going to put in fresh cilantro. Boy, does that make it good. Well, I took the rice out of the oven about 10 minutes ago and set it on the stove top. Now it's time to take off the lid and mix in the cilantro. Boy, this is beautiful. And now I have about a cup, a cup and a half of fresh cilantro. I'm going to stir it in and it's ready to serve. What do you think? You know, we've gone through this Mexican fiesta and it's been a lot of fun. We've made some great dishes and I'm not going to open up a bag of chips to serve with my meal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some homemade chips out of these tortillas. It's a piece of cake. Let's, let's get started. So this is really easy and it's fat free. What I have here is I have this salt. It's a fine grain sea salt and I've combined it with some paprika. And I've got your fat free butter flavored cooking spray. Put them next to each other so I can do two at a time. It's pretty cool, check this out. Just a little bit of spray on each one and just a little bit of this mixture of salt and paprika. If you put too much on, it overpowers it. You have to be careful. Flip them over and do the same thing again. Just a little bit, careful not too much. Okay. We have our tortillas, we sprayed them and we put our salt mixture on them. Now we put them under the broiler. You want to put them close to the top of the broiler. You want the broiler to be on low, not high. You want them to have access to the heat above, so don't overlap them too much. I can get 15 on one rack. Turn them over when they get brown on top. I'm gonna keep an eye on this. You don't wanna walk away. Okay, so everything is coming together now. I took these out of the oven. Look at them, they're beautiful. Break them up. There's your chips. There you go. A big basket of beautiful chips right here. The definition of extraordinary. Beyond what is usual. Exceptional. Unusually great. Roasted in Oshkosh. Quality. Locally sourced. Fresh natural ingredients, handcrafted for lunch or dinner. Husband and wife owners, Christian and Aaron Kaufman, invite you to experience beyond what is usual. When you expect the best, roasted in Oshkosh. Now we are going to make the infamous, or the famous, whatever you prefer, the chili Reno casserole that I've been talking about this whole time. You're going to really have a wonderful time, not only making this, but eating it. We'll need four poblano peppers, Corn on the cob, fresh cilantro, cream cheese, shredded jack and cheddar cheese, and eggs. I already have all the spices I'll need. 
After the sauce, I'll pick up two pounds of tomatoes, a large white onion, and a habanero pepper. If they're not available, or if you can't handle the heat, you can use a jalapeno pepper instead. I've got everything cleaned up and ready to go. First thing I want to do is take the poblano peppers and the tomatoes. I'm going to put these about three inches underneath the broiler, and uh, they're going to get black and crispy. We're going to turn them over. We're going to let them get black and crispy on that side. And then we're going to put them in a plastic bag, and we're going to let that steam for about 10, 10 or 15 minutes. The peppers go in the bag, tomatoes don't. Okay, now for the stuffing, I get some mozzarella and some sharp cheddar. And I've got about uh, probably a half a pound that I've combined the two. And we're going to use this new feature, cheese. It's a third less fat than regular cream cheese. So this is, this is going to be less fat than most chili reynos you're going to have by far. And you'll see why as we go along. There's various steps that make it that way. Okay, so now I'm going to add this piece of corn. Now you can use frozen corn if you want. That works well too. You don't even have to thaw it out. Just throw some in there, you know, like half a cup or so. Now we're going to need the cilantro for the sauce and for the stuffing. So I'm going to cut this all up and use about half for each. I've got some Hungarian hot paprika here. I'm going to give it a couple good shapes. Okay. Some uh, hot red pepper. It's cayenne. And this is cumin. This is one of the things I really love having in here. It really just sets it off. While that's happening, I'm going to start the sauce. I'll put some extra virgin olive oil in here, about a couple tablespoons. Okay, now I'm going to take these onions and I'm going to put them in this extra virgin olive oil on high heat and I'm going to cook them until they're nice and black almost. Dark, dark brown. These tomatoes, I'm going to let these cool off for a minute. And then I'm going to peel them and put them in the blender along with some habaneros. Actually, just one habanero. One of the hottest peppers there is. But if you take the seeds out and you use it sparingly, you can get its dramatic flavor and just about everybody can enjoy it. Okay, so the onions are nicely brown, and I'm gonna add these tomatoes to that now, and we're gonna reduce it. What I do now is I add the cilantro. And all the rest of the cilantro goes right in here, and this just gives it the most spectacular flavor. Okay, here is the beautiful sauce. Okay, now it's time to take care of these peppers, and we'll finish this meal up. Now that I've got these nicely cleaned, I took out the stems and the seeds, and uh, also the skin. I'm going to take my stuffing that I made and I'm going to stuff these. Okay, I mentioned that this chili relleno is, is low fat. It is in comparison to most chili rellenos you're ever going to have. One of the reasons is that I take out some of the egg yolks when I use my scrambled egg mix. Instead of using two eggs for each one of these rellenos, which would be eight eggs, I'm going to use 10 eggs, but four of those I'm going to take out the yolks and they're going to be just the whites. So that's going to cut down on, on the fat and the cholesterol substantially. I'm going to put them into this sort of 10 inch non-stick saute pan with some cooking spray and I'm going to put in my peppers. Let's go. Now I'm going to place my beautiful stuffed peppers into the eggs. I want to space them evenly so they each have a nice amount of scrambled eggs around them when I serve them. I don't want the eggs to burn, so I pull back and manipulate them like I'm making an omelet. The oven is set at 400 degrees, and I'm going to set the timer for 25 minutes. At that time, I'm going to top it with some shredded cheese and put it back in until the eggs are fully cooked, probably about another 10 to 15 minutes. Wow, would you look at that? Is that something? That is just what I was hoping for. I'm going to find the individual rellenos and cut them into four different pieces. I've got a beautiful piece right here. Look at that. That is a spectacular chili relleno dish, folks. And now some of our wonderful red sauce and some low-fat sour cream. You don't need full fat with these flavors. And top it with dried red chilies. Now, isn't that a thing of beauty?
And there we go. This is our beautiful Mexican fiesta. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you enjoyed as much as I do. Goodbye. <laughs>